D Dragon, thanks for joining us in Twitch chat. <laughs> okay, we're Happy back. to join you in Twitch chat. It's exciting to be here. I'm excited to be in Twitch chat. I just gotta keep from looking at it. <laughs> Real quick. I remember Zero and I doing the 24 hour podcast. Hey, I'm gonna take like a 10 minute break, get something to eat, something to drink. <laughs> Like ten Two minutes later, later, he's back. Yeah, we're back. Both of us, dude. It was so much fun. We couldn't leave. <laughs> I'm ready for our next one. Ready for Me our too. Next one. I am. I am super excited for the next one. It's gonna be you awesome. Know what? We need to. We need to get Blizzard to do the same um, tavern brawl as this one when we do our 24-hour stream, and we'll just play that. Oh, whole time. we could be doing that all day. Yeah, I think this time it's gonna be. We're gonna play every Blizzard game. I'm so excited. Yeah. Except I don't have um, StarCraft or Diablo, but I can use Dad's Diablo. What you can borrow. Do you have StarCraft, Dad? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, well, then we're good. Oh, we have to play StarCraft, because I've never played it. It'll be, <laughs> oh, that's It'll cool. be quite exciting. It's been a long time since I've played it. Uh, what was I playing with Nightfall? Warframe? That one's pretty fun. But SW, I don't think I'd like it. No, no I know Blizzard. it's not. I only play Blizzard games unless, unless I'm at school. Then I play uh, um, Clash of the Champions. What's so does that mean? My... Does that mean Clash we're going to play Lost Vikings also? Yeah, yeah, we can play Lost Vikings. I have it. What about Warcraft? Works versus humans. <laughs> We could, uh, I, th I think... I got Warcraft 3. I've got the, the uh, hold collector on. box. Hold on, hold on. One second. Is that what you're talking about? Um, sort of. Yeah, that's uh, Warcraft 3, but hold on. <laughs> Everybody's off getting their gear. Like, I, I got nothing. Is that what you were talking about, dude? Okay. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Are you asking oh, he, me? Oh, he's oh, he's not there. He's not there. <laughs> he's not there. I guess so, I have to like catch it on there. Come on. <laughs> I have to. I have to look at the Skype. I was looking at Twitch, <laughs> the Twitch video. Oh, that's funny. Oh, he's in the bathroom. Um, that's the closet. Fine. If you're, if you're talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think he should go to the bathroom in the closet. Tell him to get out. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, dear. Strange place to store your stuff. <laughs> this shelf what has a big they? hole in it. Let's say so we're having we're having a winter vacation, blizzard. A blizzard. Oh my goodness. Absurd. Why does my Twitch keep resetting and I lose everything everybody's all the cool stuff everybody's saying? <laughs> um keep maybe try doing cool it. <laughs> No, say it. Because I can still see it. Um maybe try popping out the chat. Well, that's the thing. I popped it out, and now it's gone. I can't say anything. Someone say right. something. <laughs> Be careful backing up your chair. Denny's right behind you. Okay. So I'll move it. I know. All yeah. that work right. just for... You guys should, like, buy one of these. <laughs> what is that, dude? Warcraft? I can't oh, read the rest of it. Is that the collector's edition? Uh-huh. That's sweet. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's you got everything except for the uh, big old art book, which was the art of uh, Warcraft, which included World of Warcraft. And yep. uh, Ariana took that with her to use it for stuff. <laughs> is that is that trading card game? It is. No. Nice. Oh, that's what he is. Yeah, I love that part. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, let's get this thing going. Okay. Let's do it. Don't have don't have these. No, don't. Now he's just bragging. 
Nice. That is a cool cover art. Yeah, that's that one's awesome. You get to fight all the dragons and the the drag. You get actually you fight Deathwing, but all the dragons are on your side. It's cool. That is cool. Hey, Laura, welcome. Zero. I I will have no problem with roommates. I can do it. They they might have a problem with me though. <laughs> do you snore? No, Espo snores. <laughs> no, actually, I don't snore. I I I sleep like like a vampire. I sleep like this. <laughs> And I don't move at all. Why is it that I can totally imagine that? I just, I fall down, and then I, I just... Uh, stay I'm there. Straight, I just stay there like a plank. I'm, I'm, so, I sleep, and then I wake up with if, rainbows and, 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 and uh, glitter and... I was going to say, if we move up, you in, in awkward positions, up. you stay there? No, no, I'll just, I'll just slowly conform back to my <laughs> vampiric state. Well, that's going to be fun. BlizzCon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, especially with Rez there. Oh my gosh, because Rez is uh, Rez and I grew bring up your... together. He'd be afraid. Squishy, bring bring the glitter. Oh, that glitter. glitter. <laughs> Are you saying you hate me, Espo? Oh, I glitter. am glitter. Oh. I have glitter hairspray. Glitter is my bane. Oh. <laughs> Pranks for Espo at BlizzCon. Sprinkle oh. glitter all in his bed. Be Put it in so on the inside of his hat, so he puts his hat on. Glitter is like cascading down. You know what I need to do? I need to get it. I need to get a couple new cycling caps for uh, for um, BlizzCon. Hey, if I, you I get a small ah. one, I can I can paint a Hearthstone on it. Yeah, I need to get a Hearthstone one. I don't think they're gonna have a Hearthstone bicycling hat. Oh, you need to make me one. Request it. <laughs> well, just get a normal baseball cap and then cut the brim off, and you're good. That's not a cycling cap. You're silly. It totally is. Oh, oh my goodness. No, it's not. If you I used think... to wear them all the time. And they're there you go. extremely yeah. comfortable. Very <laughs> thin and pliable. My cheeks hurt from smiling. And typically bright. Bright? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Except aren't you, supposed <laughs> to flip the, aren't you supposed to flip the brim up? Edward here? Cullen. Ah. Uh, I hated that part of the movie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Glitter boy. Oh my goodness. All right, are we ready to go live? That, ready to go live. I've seen it, so I don't know what people are talking about. Okay. Oh no, here we go again. Are you doing? He's brushing his getting eyebrows. My, getting my eyebrows ready. And my nose hairs. Why? <laughs> and my and my ear hair. Oh no. What what did Espo drink today? Hold on, I gotta. Put some Vaseline on my teeth. Whenever you're done. He's he's getting ready for his guest performance. That's right. He's ready to go live on TV. Excuse me. (laughs) (sighs) A few stray hairs. I, I, I got nothing. Did I got you nothing. say a few gray hairs? Oh. <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, what is that? Who is that? I thought that it was is just a, I thought it was a whisper of the old god, and then it it spoke loudly. <clears throat> wait, wait, here we go. Oh wow! Says, uh, look, there he is. <laughs> there he is. There's the Rendon. He is not only in Twitch chat. He is behind Squishy on her shelf. <laughs> <laughs> on my shelf. Is he, is he, he the frog there? So, you gotta uh, change the chip. You gotta. There you go. What does that say? It was danger. Unload gun before changing the choke. <laughs> Couldn't. I, I never saw that before. <laughs> the random. Why are you showing you, it to the screen? Um, the random things you find on your knives. <laughs> you guys don't look at your knives all the time? I don't. I do because I sharpen pencils with them. Mmm, this is true. I do that in my classroom. My kids are like, Mr. Espo, you have a knife. I'm like, no, this is a pencil sharpener and a crayon remover. <laughs> nice. Those kids will be like, oh, I made a mistake like with the crayon on their paper. And I'll be like, all right, come here. And I'll scrape it off. <laughs> 
Yep, there you go. We us artists know how to use a knife. That's right. Don't threaten artists. We, we use knives in so daily does, use. So does Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> She's having what? problems with her cheeks. My cheeks are sore because I'm smiling too much. We haven't even started the show yet. No, right? Uh, okay, are you ready now? Somebody's tapping something. Are you finished? Have my time. Oh my goodness. Esmo is, is, uh, had, had a little too much caffeine. He's gotten back on his caffeine from his withdrawals. <laughs> okay, ready for a moment of silence? Listening to Legend of the Innkeeper, the Hearthstone podcast for casual players. Welcome to Legend of the Innkeeper. I'm Bastidius. And I am Squishy Dragon. And I am Espo. <laughs> Did you just dump a bunch of candy in your mouth before we started? Red Hoss, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, so, well, let me Espo apologize can now in advance. Fire. Espo's oh, yeah. uh, hyped up, geared up. Just a little bit. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's preparing for Espo mode. Two, two I am months without for... caffeine. <laughs> oh, and we just had a major, major like lag spike. Yeah. Glitch, glitch lag. Two months I, without caffeine. So, during the the uh, what what's it called? The introduction, Pre, the pre-show. Well, not the pre-show, but oh, when, the, when the music's playing. We, yeah. Intro. Yeah, okay. There we go. The introduction. <laughs> during the musical introduction, um, it it was really weird. I heard like it got loud, and then it got quiet, and it skipped a little bit. So, mm -hmm. if we have any kind of audio difficulties this evening. It is definitely my fault. And uh, email <laughs> the show uh, and um, tweet at XCMTBGamer and let me know. And I will, uh, I'll fix it. We'll personally fix it. That's right. Get right on it. He, he will get on his dragon and go out to like the, the little box where they have the cable and do nothing because he doesn't right. have any. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stretch ah. the fellow. Well, so. it's been a uh, rather interesting week, I can say, in the world of Hearthstone. Um, I think the most notable thing we can say this week was... Right? Tavern Brawl. Oh. Squishy Dragon Tavern Brawl. Mode. So, yeah, it's been renamed to Squishy Dragon Mode, by the way. Because yeah. apparently <laughs> someone week, this week actually mode. enjoyed it. I was. I tr should we do this now? Should we do this now? No, 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 no. Let's we'll wait a minute. We'll wait ah, a minute. come on. <laughs> well, real quickly, let me just do the news. Then come we can on. just talk about what we did, and then that way you, you can be last, and then you can go straight into that. How about okay, that? go for okay, it. Okay, that works great. Okay, news. Blizzard. Okay, your time's up, Espo. Too late. Um, <laughs> Blizzard, 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 Blizzard. They have there was an article on polygon.com which is a tech gaming magazine website type thing they announced the other day that they were looking to expand their coverage of the rapidly growing esports scene by collaborating with of all things Facebook Live cuz Facebook Live is trying to promote their live stream services and they are actually reaching out to a lot of different uh, entertainment technology companies and encouraging them to produce content for their new service, which they want 
people come use their service to watch these things that people want to watch, then they'll stick around to do other things with Facebook Live, and it's kind of wanting they're kind of wanting it to be a Twitch like place or a YouTube type place to com compete against that. So, That's you know, Blizzard owns the MLG.TV streaming platform. And the president, senior vice president of Activision Blizzard Media Networks, Mike Sespo, is he like related <laughs> to Espo? He perks up uh, right away. I'm wondering if this is Espo in disguise. Trying to Maybe this, this is the fake, fake, fake Espo. No, this is fake, real Espo. <laughs> <laughs> well, he trying, said that esports trying to be the is fake, a, real Espo. So he's saying esports is a cultural phenomenon at its tipping point, and they want to build its audience and become as accessible as possible by collaborating with Facebook to stream matches live on Facebook Live. So it may be quite an interesting turnabout if they are able to pull this forward. And one of the other pieces I saw in this article I thought was really interesting is that there was a research firm called Newzoo that goes out and does research on a lot of different topics, but one of the things they did was about esports. And they say that more than one billion people will be aware of the community of esports by the end of 2016, which is 35% higher from last year. And it's a survey from around 16 countries on most continents. So esports is growing, a huge experience. You know, we went to DreamHack. We got to see live what esports is becoming. I mean, the CSGO tournament stage was insane. The tournament stage for Heroes was insane. Can you just imagine Blizzard being in, like, a football stadium for, like, one game? Well, like, you know, that's what they do for League of Legends. Stadium. League of that Legends pretty awesome. fills 100,000 seats. There's a storm at the, where did I go to the, um, like, the Dallas Dreamhack. Stadium or whatever? Oh, the, uh, yeah, Arlington's AT&T Stadium. That would be awesome. Yes. Like, I well, would be thrilled to death. <laughs> It's coming, you know. There's that's what happens in other countries like South Korea. It is a huge event there. In fact, mm -hmm. most of the stream, the uh, players that play these games are to equivalents here in the United States are like basketball and football superstars. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing the level that things have gotten over there, and I think we're starting to see some of that come into play here into more of the mainstream. So just kind of interesting stuff that's happening. Your Blizzard's been picking up. Things that are going to position themselves into the right places, including they hired the guy that ran ESPN, one of the functions in the ESPN, to become a esports head of their department. That department, mm -hmm. um, they bought the MLG TV to bring that up as a streaming platform. You know, just one thing after another after another with this. So it's going to be quite crazy. Um, they are having a two-day Blizzard is doing a two-day Call of Duty. Black Ops 3 tournament in Anaheim on June 10th that's going to be streamed on Facebook and this will be one of the first events. And it's just a Blizzard Activision because they Blizzard Activision owns Call of Duty and a bunch of other streaming titles as well. Mm -hmm. titles, sir, so. Did you just say Call of Duty? That's gross. Call of Duty. <laughs> oh. It wasn't the best name in the beginning, you know, in the first place. Yeah, I don't understand. <sighs> Call so anyways, that, I thought that was rather interesting especially with the esports stuff going along. And uh, the other thing I do want to mention is um, for those of you who are interested in playing Clash Royale, Clash Royale, we have a clan you're familiar with. If you are in our clan and you want to continue playing in our clan, make sure you donate a card this week because we're going to do a purge and we're going to clean it up so that other friends can join us and be active in our Clash of Royale clan. So... You have until Sunday this week to donate a card so that you stay active. If not, yeah, pay your taxes because otherwise <laughs> you're gonna get kicked. You're gonna get kicked out to make room. Yes, sir. You oh, in the okay. funny hat. Okay, so um, I have some some news. Some news. Ooh. Um, I wanted to. I wanted. You were talking about esports and how it's growing and and how Blizzard is is really getting in in touch with the. The fan base with with the e and the esports section, and um, because the esports are growing so much, of course we're going to have the negative side of it too. And um, 
this I actually was brought to my attention listening to a few podcasts today, um, and uh, I actually did a little bit of research on it to see if Blizzard was actually going to do something about it, and like they always do, they are. Um, mm -hmm. So at DreamHack Austin, there was a, um, a, a black player. And he actually came in second place, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, he participated in the last final match. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess his He did extremely was well, too, by the way. He was really yeah. good. Yeah. But like all places in public, and if mm -hmm. someone's doing good, you always got to find... Well, you don't, but people find something negative. And, of course, I don't know. Have you guys ever been in Twitch chat before? I've heard of that. It's, yeah. I hear it can be... Um, Isn't it something like lots Facebook of fun, or something? Right? So here's the thing. If, if, if your Twitch chat has more than 500 people in it, 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 gets, it gets insane. And I guess it, I guess it snowballed into this giant place of racism and hatred and nastiness during DreamHack Austin when this dude Terrence was playing. Which yep. isn't cool at all because I guess he was a great player. So I don't know why people were being so, you know, cutting and nasty towards him. So Mike, it's Morheim, because they can be, they can be anonymous and get away with yep. it. I yeah. mean, I've had, no... I've had a bit of a taste of that myself. So yeah, I feel for okay. Him. So so yeah, it happens. You get these people that are negative and nasty, and then it kind of snowballs because of the peer pressure thing. Um, I do want to say we've always said. When you get a bunch of guys in a room together, <laughs> the intelligence level drops considerably very quickly the more you get together. Oh, yeah. You know, you've heard the old saying, you know, here, hey, hold this. Or, hey, watch me. Watch this. You know, we yeah. do stupid With things mom, when we get no together. no hands. Yeah. Don't hear a girl so, saying that. No. I mean, sometimes <laughs> to you. That reminds me. Tonight, I had, uh, on my way home, I grabbed some Taco <laughs> Bell with the new Diablo sauce. And, you know, the, the, the little sauce packets at Taco Bell, one of them said, hey, watch this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, in this article by Polygon, they, uh, they talk about what Blizzard Entertainment is doing to try to maybe fight back or at least keep this from happening to, at this level anymore because I guess it was really, really bad. Um, it was. And Mike Morheim says... We're extremely disappointed by the hateful, offensive language used by some of the online viewers during the DreamHack Austin event the weekend before last. One of our company values is play nice, play fair. We feel there's, there's no place for racism, sexism, harassment, or other discriminatory behavior in or outside of the gaming community. And um, I guess Mike Morheim is working with Twitch um, and other streaming places to kind of uh, figure out something to kind of cull this kind of behavior on Twitch. So um, I thought that was really cool. Mike Morheim, always a really cool guy. Um, and he's the CEO, I think. Is that mm -hmm. his title over at Blizzard? He's the, he's the head honcho, let's just say that. Because we are a casual podcast. Let's just say he's the, <laughs> he's the big, big cheese at Blizzard. Um, and uh, he's he's trying to take care of business and um, keep these things you know away from these live events because you know so like he's the one time by the way there you go like the one time my mom was in our Twitch chat and it was really really cool so <laughs> I guess I guess this guy Terrence his family was in Twitch chat you know and and they're watching well they're not only in Twitch chat but they're watching his his live stream while they're mm -hmm. while he's playing and uh, imagine you're a parent. And your child, or imagine you're a brother or sister, and your brother or sister is getting this kind of stuff said to them, or said at them, or said about them. I mean, it's just, it's gross. It's horrible. So, it's um, horrible. You know. Shout out to Terrence are... for being a great Hearthstone player and doing an awesome job at DreamHack Austin. And um, mm -hmm. I, hope you, I hope you do even better things. And make those people feel bad for what they said, but you know what? They won't feel bad. I'm sorry. They probably won't feel bad. No, they it's won't. just, it's just, it's just that sad. But anyway, I uh -huh. thought I would say that. Um, I, I thought I would mention that a little bit because it is pretty big. You know, talking about how esports is growing. 
you know, in any sport, in any kind of big scene, you know, celebrity style scene, you're going to get the negative connotations. You're going to get the negative, you know, backlash and get those evil people coming out. So, well, a couple things with the Twitch chat. One, if you do attend an event with one of these types of things, you can use a button on the right side of that chat window to, to minimize that window so you don't even have to see it. In this type of thing, those types of events don't even have your chat open. You couldn't see anything at least hardly at all because the text sp spins by so it fast. It just flies by, yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. minimize it. Turn it off so you don't have to see that. I would recommend that. Um, the or, other thing I was going to say... if you're really good at Twitch chat, r report those people that are saying stuff like that. Yes. I know there's five billion of them, but if everybody reports one, I mean... Yeah. You know. Well, that's what you I was going to say, do too. Do is, most you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. In this situation, uh, it turns out Twitch does offer a moderation service, and they did not, Blizzard did not take advantage of that, especially for these larger events. And they say they help in that type of situation. Um, however, what Twitch does in general is they try to step back and let the channels moderate themselves. And as a result of that, what we've done here in our chat channel, so if you ever kind of join us and watch the live stream on Tuesday nights at 7, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we have moderators, people, friends of the podcast, people we trust, who are watching the chat, and when someone comes in the channel and starts to cause issues, they immediately jump on it and take care of the issue and encourage people nicely not to be a, a negative person in the chat. And we do that for Squishy's stream also when she's doing her art. However, we did have a situation a couple of weeks ago in her stream that somebody was really hateful, and we reported it. It turns out Twitch immediately jumped on it fairly quickly because apparently this person was jumping channel to channel to channel doing this and banned the account and had them there. They banned from their IP address if it's a, a repeat offender, so that person cannot create another account on Twitch. So it's good to tw report these people if they are doing these things. It will be taken care of over time, and, you know, of course, there are always people being s just stupid, so they have no role, you know, it seems like there's no nobody in their lives to be up there to tell them and to teach them the right thing to do, and they just they take advantage of that, unfortunately, so. So hopefully we can Anyways. help you out a little bit and say we appreciate the people who, you know, like in the LNTI community, they're awesome, they're all really uh, encouraging and good about, you know, like our mods and stuff, they're always, they're awesome. Shout out to our mods for being awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to come join us, please do. It's a safe and family-friendly zone, as best we can yes, make it. Yes, it is. Okay. Then, um, this week, let's go into this week. I, Espo, do you want to go first or you want me to? <laughs> um, why don't you go first? Okay. Uh, do we want to do our top, top three? Well, that's part of... That's part okay. of what we're doing, because it's top okay. three neutrals. So, anyways, um, I do want to mention I opened a few packs this week. And I absolutely did not open any Goldens this week. Uh-huh. Zero. How many Legendaries? Zero. One. Just okay. one. Okay. That's not too bad. And it's not one I, and it's one I didn't have before. And Espo's reading chat, and he's not paying attention. <laughs> Busted. Busted. Because <laughs> um, he did hear me say I did not open any goldens this week. Oh yeah, okay. I didn't. <laughs> if it, it, when you talk about opening packs, I do just ignore you. So it it actually worked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did open one legendary. Oh jeez, what'd you get? Andrew. Ah, I had the golden one for like two seconds. <laughs> I know. I believe you just Ow. scanned that. So yes, I opened Fandral. Which I was like, cool, I don't have that one. No, he's really good. He's yeah, I'm really good. excited about using him, so yeah. I'm going to do that once I get a Druid quest. So. so that's, yeah, I didn't do anything else last week at all. Nothing. Nothing at all. Not not a thing. Tavern roll. Lots and lots and lots of tavern. <laughs> I did do an arena run. Um, didn't do too well. No, one win. No, you know, two three losses or whatever it is, you know, I'm out. So, um, working on another legend, I mean, another uh, 
for me to run right now. It's not going so well. Why am I not surprised? And uh, so, anyways, that that is pretty I, I much think, it. Um, I reserve. I, think I agree with uh, zero in chat. He says blah blah blah. Gold legendary blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's that's. I best only have for one you. gold legendary. Because <laughs> you dust them all. No, I don't. I don't dust anything. Really? Oh. No, I don't dust That's anything. Surprise. Oh, okay. The only thing I dusted was the non-golden Chogol. <laughs> okay, continue. You're excused. So anyways, I will share my Taverball topic, the discussion, later when we actually talk about that. But I did, the rest of the week was all that. So, that's both. Alright, so, um, my week, let me see, let's do it... Yeah, let's start. Let's start with last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I decide I'm gonna do an arena run. So my first arena run um, in Whispers of the Old Gods, and like you, dude, I got one win and three <laughs> losses. So it was uh, it was sad. And I I even used the um, what the heck arena helper that uh, Edwaka Edwakta yep. and uh, mm -hmm. Murps do. Um, yeah, and it was... Well, okay, here's the bad thing. So, two rares um, and arrest commons. And or, and or basic cards. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. That's yeah, real hard. Yeah. So, I went up against... Um, I saw a Nazoth. That was, that was awesome. Um, I saw... Let me see. What else did I see? No Cthulhu's, because there's no Cthulhu in Arena. Yeah. Right. Um, let me see. A uh, guy played, uh, he facelist, I want to say he facelist another legendary. I mean, it was like KT or something, or something crazy. Like I saw it was not, Tyrion, saw Tyrion, that was exciting. You mm -hmm. know, seeing Tyrion in arena is always good. Um, it, it was just ridiculous. The, the decks I went up against, I was like, how, how do you choose these cards? I had no choices like this. Like, I, I couldn't imagine. Like, I, yeah, no epics, no legendaries, you know, maybe, maybe three rares, um, and all the rest were commons, it was super sad, super sad. Mm. So, uh, I gave up on Arena and said, forget this, and just started saving my gold for the, um, uh, next, uh, adventure mode. So, yeah. Okay. But, um, okay. Are you so starting to arena, save for that? Yeah. So I got like fifteen hundred gold saved. Um, I've been spending so, it on packs. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have all the cards I want. Like what? what well, do I so want? do I, but I'm missing just a few. <laughs> I'm missing right. just a few. I want the uh, legendaries. Um. So I got a. Uh, let me see. A quest. Oh, oh! I got a quest to do. Um. What was it seven wins in any mode? Which was cool. Ooh. That was that was really cool. So I got to play whatever I wanted. Played out. Uh, Which played was a very easy to do. Uh, sweet. Tavern, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh yeah, yeah. That was. Oh, that yeah. reminds oh, me. Okay. I got the quest to win five tavern brawls. Oh, oh I got that. Gee, that was hard. All, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. So let, let, let's let's hold off on that for now. Um, <laughs> so I got a quest, and I played. Uh, I got. I played a little bit of hunter this week. So I've I've wanted to play the Yogg-Saron... Um, hunter, and uh, allow myself to do the lock and load, right? Okay. So I had a lot of fun with that. Played around with it. I actually played some shaman this week too. Um, that that I, I dude. I'm surprised. Yeah, right. And with whispers of the old gods, I think shaman got the biggest boost. It just it just feels like they did. I would um, agree. So I, they definitely got I jumped a, on, a big boost to help yeah, the class. Yeah, so I played a lot of Shaman just for fun. Um, and I'm trying to teach myself the class, too, because that's... Druid, um, I played probably... I think when TGT came out, I started playing a little bit more Druid. I don't know if you guys remember that episode where I actually started playing Druid. <laughs> um, but this... I, I started playing a little bit of Shaman, and I'm liking it. It's, it's pretty cool. And uh, you can do a lot of cool things with it. So having, having some fun with Shaman. Went back to the Hunter. Had a little bit of fun with that. 
messed around with Mage a little bit with Yogg Saron. Just all these things with Yogg Saron. Did did a lot mm-hmm. of fun things with Yogg. Played a little bit of Enzoth, um, Hunter, and Rogue. And I had a quest for Druid, so I played a little bit of Druid. But I played Cthulhu Druid, and it was the uh, the deck that Blizzard the deck recipe. So they okay. have a God's recipe, except it only has one God in it, and um, that's Cthulhu. That's Cthulhu. And and it 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 did well for me. I mean, I'm sitting at I think I'm sitting at like rank 19, but that's because I'm I'm really just having a blast with all these crazy decks, and you know, it's like win one lose one. Win one, lose two. Win two, lose two. You know, it's like here and there, and just having a blast with all these new cards, and just checking them out, and using the deck recipes a lot, too, which is cool. Um, Diving into wild a little bit. Again, not as much as I thought I would. I thought I'd be in wild a lot more, but honestly, like, I'll be the first to admit, I was wrong. Like, I... I'm okay with standard. Like, I'm having fun with standard. And I think it's because, like I said last week, I'm seeing more of the new cards, and that's what I'm excited about right now are the new mm-hmm. cards. Right. So in Wild, they're going to be kind of sprinkled in, whereas in standard, you're going to see a lot more of them. So I'm really enjoying standard. Like, I made I made a Wild deck, but it was, it was Wild that uh, I only had, like, two cards that weren't standard. So I was like, you know what, I might as well make it a standard deck. So having a lot of fun with standard, which I didn't think... I mean, I knew I would. I'll have fun with Hearthstone no matter how I play it. But I thought I would be in Wild a lot more, and I've actually been in... I've been in standard. And there well, you go, the, guys. <laughs> the sad thing is, um, the uh, when you mentioned Wild, I'm like, what? oh, there is a Wild, isn't there? Mm, I forgot about it. I mean, I've just been so focused on standard, so... I, I didn't expect to play Wild much at all. I've thought about being maybe doing that sometime down the road, but it wasn't something I thought about. You know, unlike Espo was saying from the beginning, I'm doing Wild. I'm like, I'm doing Standard, so. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, so, let's so get yeah. squishy. Unless so that you're was, done. Uh, well, and, and then Tavern Brawl, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, my week was Tavern Brawl, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so let's let's do this thing. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just... It's a, I thought she was going to have to say a little well, bit more than that. Well, wait, well, well, before she gets into it, because I have a feeling she's going to talk about it a little bit more once we get her going, let's let's go with Vestidious. Um, this, this episode I'd mentioned maybe starting talking about the class cards in Whispers of the Old Gods, and you had mentioned, let's talk about um, the neutrals first. So this episode, okay. we're gonna kind of going to mention a few of the neutrals that we liked and the ones that we think are being used a lot, and maybe even mention a few that we think about crafting. But first, let's hear your three favorites. Three favorite neutral cards. Vastidious. Okay, unfortunately, I was looking through the list and I immediately <laughs> made sure that I listed one specifically, which was Deathwing Dragonlord. I mean, I uh, have yeah. to. Uh, well, yeah. I, I, you you can't not. <laughs> like you would yeah. get you would get waylaid with tweets and Facebook messages and <laughs> emails. You'd be banned yeah. from the show. We yeah. have a guest <laughs> guest speaker who is Deathwing. You'd, you'd lose all credibility. <laughs> <laughs> I had credibility. Mm. <laughs> when re- when it comes to reading cards, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Uh, but thankfully, though, I can't really mess that one up too badly. Um, well, we'll see. Give me time, and we'll see. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm sure you can find a way. I'm sure I can find a way, but I mean, it says pull all your dragons from your hands into the battlefield. How can I mess that up? If you have Deathwing. And that's it. <laughs> no dragons. Um, yeah, it's a Murloc dragon deck with one dragon. Uh, the other card I picked was Yog saron I had to put Yog saron because I am absolutely loving Yog saron I got to do a big old battle the other day with my mage Yog saron deck. And it was so much fun because I was... I got it up to 16 um, spells casted before I was able to 
throw him down the board at the end, you know, and it's just it was it was so cool. And this is even on my phone playing and you know, just it's, it was so cool. It's like, yes, this is good. And then I would get a card at have Yogg. I'm down like to maybe the thirteenth turn. Yogg's on my hand. I'm gonna play him the next turn. And then I'd get a spell. Draw a spell. I'm like, oh, Oh, and of course it's flame strike, and I need to clear his board. Okay, well flame strike. Okay, that's number number fourteen. Okay, then I next turn and I'd get bl- blizzard. I'm like, oh, well I need need to clear the board again. That's another spell. So <laughs> yeah. That's the problem with playing Jog is that my games keep going because I keep going. Oh, another spell, another spell. So, yeah, that 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 was my second choice. I love playing you with Jog. And finally, I have to put scaled nightmare. I have not used this but once, but it is such a card that you it's a threat you put on the board. It's the 2-8 dragon that at the end of the beginning of your turn, next turn, becomes its health becomes the same as its I mean its attack is the same as its health, I think is what it's called. No. Um, okay, so scaled nightmare. It, He's <laughs> at the start I don't of read the your card. turn. It's okay. <laughs> I got your back, brother. I got your back. So he's a six mana dragon. Um, at the start of your turn, double this minion's attack, and he is a two yeah, eight. Right. Yeah. So he starts out as a two eight. So a little bit difficult to remove. And then at the beginning, at the start of your next turn, you double his attack to four, unless you've buffed him to four, and then to eight, and then to sixteen. Um, he's also a dragon. That's crazy. Yeah, he is. He's literally Crazy Town. Um, his name is. Uh, it, it's it's easy to remember because he scales up. There you go. Yes. Very nice. Very clever. So that was my last choice because he can get crazy, especially in decks where you have some form of boost to attack. Um, if you can boost his attack, and not the ones that disappear, because if it's not a permanent boost, like for example, Paladin is better. Than using Priest. the one that just gets two. Yeah. Priest is great too, yeah. But Paladin can give him a 4 4. Or no, Priest, and, Priest does health mostly. Oh, well, you got. Mostly health. You got. Uh, Velen's Chosen. Velen's Chosen. And, yeah, there's a couple. But, yeah. uh. Yeah. So, well, you can, the, you can use Inner Fire, change yeah. his health to his, to to his, his attack. attack, and then at the beginning of your next turn, it, yeah, that's permanent. There you go. So there's a couple yeah, different classes that help. work well with that. So, anyways, it's it's a fun card. I want to play with it and kind of figure out some tricks to it. But that that's what I went with. So there you go. All right, Squishy, your three favorites. Well, I'm sure everybody saw this coming, but uh, I picked the blood of the, what is it? The blood of Iker? No. Um, <laughs> Yummy. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> neutral, no. neutral. That, that's a warrior. Yeah, Ooh, I picked Shift Azuris, of course. What? The bottom is off, of course. You picked the, what? I know everyone saw it coming like a mile wide, but hey, like they're awesome cards and they're adorable. So, and I also picked uh, Cult Apothecary. What? Because that one has some awesome, cool, uh, awesome, cool. Ours, <laughs> I can't articulate. Awesome card art. Oh, okay. No. But, well, I, I mean, it's not a bad card either, so. I remember talking, you know, we had talked about these a few episodes ago, and uh, I remember talking about Shifter Zerus, and the first time you saw Spawn of Nazoth, and then we talked about <laughs> Cold Apothecary, too, because the, the card art's really cool. It's a worgen, and he's kind of got some purple spell juice flowing around him. I also have yeah, him I said as golden, yeah, spell so. Juice. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, good choices, good choices. Okay, that's both. Okay, so, um, my three, I, the first one, I, 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 of course, I wanted to choose Yogg Saron, but, oh man, Vastidius took that one. So I went ahead and chose Twin Emperor Vecklor. When I made my first Cthune deck, I threw these guys in there, and I say these guys because there's, there's two of them if you get your your Cthune above 10 attack, and yeah, it's it's awesome. These guys are so cool. And uh, my second choice was Nazoth, because I love playing Deathrattle, one of my favorite mechanics in the game. And yeah, that's Nazoth one of the ones I might actually have to craft just to play with that mechanic, because that is really fun. I, uh, I play this in Wild a lot, 
And I love bringing back my sludge belchers. Those are always fun to bring back. Um, and then my, my third choice is actually one that I, I, I really didn't, didn't play with a lot because I haven't built a lot of these decks, but uh, Biofin Tidehunter, the Murloc card. So he mm -hmm. makes a 1-1 uh, one, one ooze with taunts. And I, I got some plans for him. I think, like we're, I think he and I are going to have fun. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What nice dinner, maybe a movie or... Possibly, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, then. Well, there's some good choices. There's some with the neutrals. There are a lot of uh, variety out there, but it's interesting to me that you know, we were talking before the show. How have you seen these cards in play? Have you seen these cards in play? Going through each of the different types levels, and it's interesting to note how many of these we don't see yet. And I say yet because I think yeah. people are going to figure out ways to make these things work. And we're going to suddenly see decks that come out of the woodwork that have combinations of these cards that we would have never expected. I mean, Ancient Harbor, Har Harbinger. At the start of your turn, put a 10-cost minion from your deck into your hand. Nobody's doing that right now. But one of these days, that's going to happen. Somebody's going to start throwing some of these mm -hmm. cards out there. You know, Dark Speaker, Battlecry swaps stats with a friendly minion. You know, where's the, where's the benefit to that? Who knows? Somebody hasn't come up with a crazy idea yet, but yeah. it's coming and it's coming. Well, Squishy, did you have any crazy ideas this past week? <laughs> well, I didn't necessarily. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> um, well, so are are we going into Tavern Brawl? I think that? you ought to talk about your okay. crazy ideas. What did you do? Great. Well, um, Vestilius helped me create a deck. And uh, do you remember what the first one we made was? Yes, I do. It was, um, I walked into the room and I said, hey, you've got, I, I, you got to play Tavern Brawl one time, and I've got a deck, guarantee you'll get a, it's like a 90% chance you're going to get a win. 90, mm -hmm. 90, 99% chance. And so I sat down, we, she loaded it up, we got there, and I said, okay, first thing you need to get is get Mech Warper and Metal Tooth Leaper. And I'm like, great, I open my collection, I have neither one. Neither one. So, That's about yeah. reading chat. <laughs> she had, he acts all innocent. He's like, what? What? I wasn't doing she had, she had neither one. <laughs> so at that point I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. So then I said, let's look at Mage, because I had another option um, with Mage. Yeah, and we did... Freeze? What was it? Frostbolts or something? And, uh... Oh, what was the other one? Uh, I'm trying to something. remember what they were. I should have written these down! I know. Well, it was another option. And so she played that one. It didn't do too well either. However, her opponent <laughs> played against her. Yes, the and they played, combo. It, they played with a Wisp Evolve deck, and uh, we were like, Oh, lights. that's a really good combo. You know, lights went off. Every, you know, everything yep. happened. We're like, oh, there it is. That was that <laughs> moment. I suppose read chat again. <laughs> I mean, you, you finally found a, a card that you could play. Or you finally found cards <laughs> that would work. There you go. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> oh I, hear, I, I hear no no inflection at the end of the sentence, so I know it's not a question. So I don't but have to answer. But you didn't hear the, ah, oh, moment, you know. I did. She finally had yeah, cards that react. she could play. I, I'm <laughs> reacting. It's awesome. <laughs> it still has lag. What is going yeah. on? <laughs> so we'll just so say. Anyways. So I ended like this, and he'll he'll say something because he thinks we're asking a question. No. Anywho, <laughs> so I played a couple. Um, I played several games with my Wisp Evolve deck, which was awesome because you know you put down a one cost Wisp, or no zero cost, right? Yes. I'm like, now yes. Dad's reading chat. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so zero cost wisp. So mm -hmm. if you get two of those in your hand and evolve, you slap down both those, play your evolve, it turns into a minion that is one cost more than the wisp. So it would be, you know, one cost card. Um, and you just keep doing that, like, the whole game. Because, of course, the Tavern Brawl, I don't know if we stated this today, but it is uh, choose two cards, and that's all you can get in your deck. Um, so, 
it, it's oh, so much fun. So I did play against someone who had Brave Archer and Arcane Shot. And uh, so they would just Arcane Shot and Brave Archer, which is uh, Inspire, and if your hand is, not Ant, Inspire, if your hand is empty, deal two damage to the enemy hero. So they had like, you know, at one point like five Brave Archers in the hand. Well, they would put those down and they do continuous damage to me. Um, and that one I thought was pretty good. Um, they, of course, beat me. <laughs> it's funny because I lost kind of a lot in Tavern Brawl, but it was still so much fun. Um, another one I played against and, you know, lost was, let's see, Cold Light Oracle and Neutral Naturalize. Sorry. So, uh, I ended up almost beating them, but the fatigue got me at the end there. But, um, so yeah, it was just, it was fun. I had several games. I was trying to write down the good ones. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to play, you know, a whole lot because we had kind of a crazy weekend. Um, but... Super fun. So, anyone else have awesome experiences with Tavern Brawl? I Espo, did. you have to I did. up. I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Let, let's let Vastidis go first, and then I have I have every class and all the cool things that I did and thought of. And yeah, I I played a lot. So Vastidis, you you, you, you actually took note. Well, okay. So, no, I didn't know Are this. You, but Vastidis no, I was just, had a busy I was just week. Vastidis yeah, had I was a busy saying, week. You actually wrote down notes. Did I? On yeah. Paper with a pencil. Well, yeah, and then I. Okay. I, I was just I curious. Typed in. I typed them in. <laughs> wow, well, that must have taken ages. Um, I didn't. I didn't know that you were having a busy week, but I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and see what I can do here with the show notes. And uh, well, well, you you were surprised, but you looked at the show notes today. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, well. I have to say, uh, my favorite one that I did, and it's it, some of these are going to overlap what you wrote down, because I did take a couple from what you did too. Um, I started with the 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 uh, Mech Warper Metal Tooth Leaper. That was my first one that I came across because I played a really bad combination trying at my first game, and then my second game, well, I saw my opponent had this combo. And absolutely crushed me. And at that point, it was like, okay, I got to try that out. Because that worked really well. Really, really well. So I got that, and I started beating people. And that's the one where <laughs> I was like, okay, 90% of my games, I was winning them. And it was just super powerful. And then I came across people who would just tear me up, you know, with other things, too. And... um so I did that, and then I also tried Mage. I tried a few th options here and there with Mage. Uh, the one I settled on the most and went, kept going back to was the uh, the uh, Shaman. shaman. Um, either Wisp, Evolve, or I switched over to Target Dummy, Evolve, for a little while too, which it doesn't really matter because you're immediately evolving it most times in your turn, but there were a couple of turns when I needed just a little roadblock between them taking out one of my minions you know, and just clearing my board. And that's when the uh, target I mean, actually helped slow down the attack on me a little bit. So Yeah, when you don't get those, minor road those evolves. Blocks, when you don't get those evolves, tar the target dummy actually mm -hmm. helps you a little bit from getting all that face damage that they're doing. So it'll stop that Metal Tooth Leaper and all those pumped up me uh, mech warpers from hitting you in the face. I mean, it just gives them a little roadblock, but then next turn, you may draw into that evolve, you know, yep. but then again, if they killed all your minions off, it's... Uh, it, However, keep going, you know, and then I'll talk about the it. The one I had the best <laughs> luck against with that deck was one I, I didn't expect to have a lot of luck with. Um, I started seeing this happening, this one deck showing up a lot. Innervate or natural, naturalize. Actually, it was naturalize and cold light oracle on a druid deck. Mm -hmm. Saw tons of those. Because yep. suddenly everybody discovered that combo, and you're like, "Oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread." Yeah, except <laughs> when you face the shaman with the evolve combo, because oh, what God. happens is you you clear your hand with the evolve combo as you get in more and more of these cards. And so you get all these cards on the board as much as you can evolve them. You've got a whole new board, and it's just it's awesome. And then they go and throw 
four to six more cards back in your hand with theirs, killing off all your minions, you're like, thank you. Exactly. I got more ammunition. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Fill the board That's up again, evolve about. it three times. <laughs> and it's like, this is the worst thing you could have done. <laughs> it's giving me more cards. And what's so. so crazy about this brawl is that it really is more about luck than strategy. Which is something I really enjoy because, like, that's the one reason that I don't get super into Hearthstone because it's so much based on strategy. And I usually don't like strategy games, but I do like it with Hearthstone for the most part. It's just I have to know so much about it. Um, so when it's a little more based on luck, I am oh, and thrilled also only to death. having to go <laughs> two cards. Exactly. So you know, you know, you have two cards. You wait to see which two cards they have, and. Um, you know, sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't. Like, you just, it depends who you're fighting against, what their deck is. So, it's it's really interesting. Because sometimes you're like, no, there's no way I'm going to win this. And uh, I, I like to keep going to see how it will play out anyways, even though I'm going to have a horrible death. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would play some people, and we'd both be like, oh, good game, you know, good job, good move, all that. Because we're both liking each other's decks, you know. But one of us ends up dying obviously or, or the game would go on forever so <laughs> so I had a great time with it that would be uh, really the two I really stuck with was dealing with the shaman and throwing the mage out there a few times too but, but yeah definitely uh, right. good. okay that's what, go for it okay so for those of you that are uh, that didn't do the tavern brawl this week you really missed out I would say this ranks up there with, um, I think someone actually on the Facebook page mentioned this too, that it ranks right up there with the build your deck. So as you start out with a few cards and as the brawl goes on, you add, you discover cards and add them to your deck. And at the end of your turn, you toss your hand into your deck and reshuffle it. So you're, you're kind of building your deck as you go. This ranks right up there with that one. Um, this is, this is kind of neat because what it does is it forces you to think about strategies and combos. I know um, Squishy Dragon said that she really enjoyed this one because it was based more on luck than strategy. But I would have to say the way I played it, I, I actually really thought about each turn and wanted to make sure... I was able to do the combo the next turn, especially later on in the brawl, like around like Saturday and Sunday, um, when it was getting late in the brawl and people were really cr throwing out some crazy things. Um, I, I really started thinking about um, how do I counter these other cards that are coming out. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. But for those of you that missed this brawl, the way it worked was... Um, the innkeeper is wondering which two cards work best together. You show him, choose two cards, and then he fills your deck with them. So basically, you choose two cards that combo well together, and then they shuffle 15 of each of those into a deck. So you could choose, um, let's just say, like neutral cards like Mech Warper and Gorilla Bot A3. They work really well together because you throw a bunch of mech warpers out there, and then your gorilla bot is free, and then he gives you a mech in your hand when you already have a mech on the board. And it's it's really cool. It kind of fills your hand, gets mechs on the board. It's uh, a, gr a great neutral combo, so you could play that with any class. Um, it's it's a gorilla what? A gorilla bot. <laughs> gorilla bot? You need to enunciate, Espo. <laughs> g gorilla bot? No, oh dear. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Did, did I say Gorilla Bot? <laughs> well, now you did. Oh, oh, I did. I just did. Okay. So, <laughs> so anyway, so that, that just happened. Okay. So let's keep, keep it clean, guys. Moving on. Keep it clean. Moving on. Okay. So, um, yeah. So what we have is we have uh, the first class I want to talk about is Druid which we saw a ton of because people were like, Innervate, awesome. I could play all these great big cost cards early on. So we've got um, the Innervate, one of my favorite, Yasharaj. So you Innervate Yasharaj, he's 10 cost card, right? 
but at the end of your turn, he pulls a minion out of your deck and puts it on the board. Well, guess what? Yeah. The only minion in your deck is Yasharaj. So turn one, you innervate, 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 and coin, and you get Yasharaj. You put him on the deck, it, or put him on the board at the end of your turn, another Yasharaj comes out, you have two 10-10s on the board at the end of your first turn. Pretty crazy. So um, that's one of in them. In a turn two, you have four. Yeah, yeah. So we've got uh, you can you can uh, living roots, power of the wild, uh, naturalized, or innervate into a cold light oracle to kind of mill your opponent. Um, I found that the naturalized worked a little bit better, especially in like the uh, other. If you're going up against another druid that has the kind of the same idea with cold light oracle, but didn't put naturalized in, because naturalized makes your opponent draw cards, whereas you don't. So you kind of, you don't draw as many as they do. And you, you can put them into fatigue a couple turns before you go in, if you're playing it right. And you get a bunch of two twos on the board in the Murlocs. And who doesn't love Murlocs on the board? Um, so, and I'll talk about my other, my fourth Druid combo in a second. Um, let's go to Hunter. So Vestidius touched on the Hunter. Mech Warper, Metal Tooth Leaper. You throw all these Mech Warpers on the board, and then Metal Tooth Leaper... When he comes on, on into play, he gives all your mechs plus one, plus one? Is that? Or gives them plus two attack. One, one or the other, but either way, he buffs plus them. Plus two attack. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, mage, tons of mage, including the most boring one of all, the <laughs> ice block mage. Where yes. they would play anything with ice block. So they would hope that each turn they draw into their ice block, and then they would ice block... Fireball, Ice Block, Ice Lance, Ice Block, Arcane Missiles. It was Ice Block, Unstable Portal. You saw all kinds of these crazy things with Ice Block. The most boring thing in the world. Um, it was, uh, but it was interesting. It was cool to see these neat, neat things. Uh, Flame Walker, Arcane Missiles, Sorcerer's Apprentice, which makes your uh, spells cost one less. And then Unstable Portal, which gives you a minion, right? So you kind of make, again, you're building your deck with all these multiple minions. Um, Priest was cool. I saw a couple Priest decks where they had Mind Blast, which is deal five damage. And then they had um, the, one, the one spell that deals five damage and heals five damage. Saw uh -huh. um, uh, Mind Blast and Light Well. Lots, lots of cool combos with Priest. Uh, Rogue, Mech Warper, and Iron Sensei was pretty cool. Shaman. Y'all were talking about the Shaman. Oh, Evolve. yeah. Evolve. We saw every card, every zero-cost card with Evolve. Um, I also saw Biofin Tidehunter, which I mentioned is one of my favorite cards. Yeah, that's a good one. It's, well, see, the thing with Biofin Tidehunter, he's not a zero-cost, but he brings two minions on the board, and that way you can Evolve two minions. Two. Yeah. Um, um, I do have to say real quick, when we were getting this all set up for Squishy. You know, she's only got one zero-cost minion in her whole entire deck. Or her yeah, hand, or her collection. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was like, how do you not have any other zero-cost minion? No target wow. dummy? No target dummy. Luck? <laughs> so she only has... So she only has... She doesn't have her baby Murlocs yet? Nope. No, I, no, now I, I find have, that hard to believe. Tiny fin. I don't have Tiny Fin. She doesn't have Tiny Fin. Ah, you. I'm, I'm gonna go craft tiny fin. I was gonna say that disappoints thanks, thanks me. Thanks for having the show, but I'm gone. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. You do. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, well, I got I got three more things to talk about. Sorry. Three more classes to talk about. So you you go ahead and craft them while I'm doing that. So shaman <laughs> evolved. We we saw it. Um, Warlock was really cool. Um, one combination that I went up against and I thought, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Fist of Jaraxxus, Soulfire. Mm -hmm. This is, this is really, really cool. So as you know, Soulfire discards a card. It, deal four damage, discard a card. So when you discard... Guess what Fist of Traxxas does. When you discard, it deals four damage randomly to any enemy. So it could hit a minion, or if there's no minions, it hits face for four. So in, in theory, you could coin out 16 points of damage on turn one. Um, <laughs> oh. if, you, if you did it right. And then um, we've got... Any charge minion, like Stone Tusk Boar, and Power Overwhelming. I mean, who doesn't want to deal all kinds of damage with just 
you know, um, Im immediate charge with fire overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got, of course, knife juggler, forbidden tentacles. Oh, boy. Or as most of you know it, forbidden ritual. It's the zero cost spell for warlocks. You use up all your mana and you summon that many tentacles. So with knife juggler, anytime you summon a minion, he throws a little knife. Uh, it's just incredible. I think I saw that one time played against me, and it's too slow. I you thought can't it was ramp. You can't ramp it up that fast because yeah. in order to get enough for uh, enough tentacles to really trigger the knife juggler to do a bunch of stuff, you have to have a lot of mana. And if you don't have a lot of mana, you know I mean, they were playing against me with Mech Warper and the Metal Leaper. Turn four, I, I won. It was over at turn yeah. four. You can't do enough damage with Night Juggler and Forbidden Ritual on by turn four for you to defe defeat me with the Metal Tooth Leaper wearing my corporate. Well, the, uh, the first deck I played, and this is, this is going to sound crazy because you think I would go straight to Hunter or, or Warlock, right? The right. first deck I played, as soon as I saw Choose to do it, I thought, Target Dummy Bolster. I don't know why I went to Warrior. I don't even play Warrior. But that was the first thing I went to. Because I thought, oh my gosh, I could throw out, you know, coin out, because Bolster's two cost. Turn one, I could coin out Bolster on top of all my target dummies. So if I had three target dummies and one Bolster, oh my gosh, I have all these, you know, two, four minions on the board. And so uh, I played that and, uh, and then moved on from there. So... At the end so what you're of saying Saturday, is that the warrior run was a uh, deck? Did you just name it? Say just add water. Kind of, I guess. Pretty yeah, much, bolster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all of a sudden blow up. But it, but it's, but it, but it's weird that that one was the one that uh, that I went to first. That was kind of kind of interesting. But at the end of the week, or the, at the end of Saturday night, because I played it a lot on Sunday, um, I finally found the deck that that uh, I was able to counter, because I ran in to Ice Block Mage at the end of Saturday, and I was like, I can't have this. This is just... <laughs> I got it. Innervate Loatheb. So, so I went ahead and made the Innervate Loatheb deck and never lost. Wow. All night Saturday, all day Sunday, I countered everything. I got so lucky with my draws. I was able to play Loatheb almost every turn, and they could never play their Ice Blocks. They could never That's play insane. their Inner Fates. Um, so a few spells got cast later in the game, but by then my 5-5 five, five Loathebs were smashing face. I mean, you can't take 5, 10, 15 damage each turn and expect to stay alive. So, um, man, once missed, I made that deck, I was like, I got it. You missed one. You didn't put one down that I took of yours that I played and had a great amount of fun with. Which one? Mech Warper and Memoran's Head. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I forgot about that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that was early. I think that was early Saturday morning I tweeted about that. Um, so uh, we've got – it didn't work really well. Maybe that's why I didn't It was fun it. when it did work. But it, it was fun. So you could get um, Mech Warpers out and get Mim's head, and most decks you played against – there you go. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you <laughs> filling in the show notes for me. Um, so, Mimiron's head, you, if you have three or more mechs on the board, at the start of your turn, they form Voltron. And uh, he has charge and quad quad wind fury. He can attack four yes, times. Yes, he can attack four turn. times. Yeah, it, and so much fun. <laughs> So I, I uh, tweeted out that idea and uh, had a lot of I jumped of on it. Yeah, it was the, cool. the thing I found real quickly, I, I forgot. I just loaded my board up with a whole bunch of uh, Mech Warpers and a couple Mimron's head. No. Yeah, bad move. Because no. it destroys all yeah. mechs on yeah. the board and yeah. makes them into what? bad. Like, so you're oh. saying you did something like uh, It wasn't Deathwing? really bad because I got three more of them in my hand within a few turns and I could do it again, but you don't yeah. know how many times I played that and I got it off every time. I got it off every time, 
But the bad thing is, so you get it off, and then sometimes your hand doesn't have enough mechs to do it, or you get too many MIMS heads and not enough mech warpers, and, and by then you're dead. But um, every time I got it off, I got I got a wow or a uh, well played. Amazing. Yeah, right? It was everybody, yeah. and you could tell they weren't being sarcastic because they were like, you know, they, they would pause, and they'd be like, what What just happened? Did he really <laughs> just play Mim's head? <laughs> So I well, have a lot and that's, of fun with that. That's another thing that's great about this Tavern Brawl is that everybody, you know, you have a good deck and you play somebody and they say, wow, well played. You know, like everybody yeah. seems to be appreciating everybody else's decks. They're not just like, oh, well, you know, well, you're rare. So, you know, <laughs> it's like it's it's more, I guess, camaraderie kind of in a way. It's like everybody's learning from everybody else and saying, that is good. That was a good play. So I think also there were a lot of um, creative decks coming out, a lot of creative ideas that people were throwing out there that were, I know, at least three of my decks I got from people I played. And yeah. it was because I, they played that. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? I'm building that deck because that's awesome. And I had a great time doing that. Um, I do have to say one thing. There's a bad thing about this whole tavern brawl, other than it's being over. Yeah. Here we are talking about all these great ideas and all these awesome combinations, and the people who are going to listen to the show are going to go, "Oh, that's a great idea! I wish I could." I can't play. I want to go play it. <laughs> I want to go play it. Like so seriously, I'm sorry. Let's, let's go play it. <laughs> Make and, notes. And what's, what's sad is there's episode. no way to recreate it. Make note of this episode so that when it comes back in rotation, you can yes. come back to this show notes and write grab a whole bunch of the decks. Episode December 94. 94. <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, episode 94. Mech Warper and Gorilla Butt. Gorilla <laughs> Butt. Oh, my, oh goodness. my goodness. I was laughing for so, like five minutes. Because <laughs> I'm like, so, what is he saying? And then he'd say it again. I'm like, no, and so stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. I, I really wish that like the physical card game, you could customize the deck builder where it would allow for more than just two cards of, you know. Because right now you can only put two of any certain card in your deck unless it's legendary, you can only put one. I wish there was a, a way you could say in friendly battles it changed mm -hmm. the way your deck... Like, you know, right now you could choose, well, I'm going to build a wild deck or I'm going to build a standard deck. And then maybe there's another device built into the Hearthstone deck builder where it's build a friendly deck where you could have all they, nat, all nat the dark fish. It gives you know? them rules. Yeah, they you need have the rules party mode. Change them. Yeah, party mode. You need mode. to have party mode. We can just, like, go wild. There's, like, no rules, you know? I mean, obviously just some, right. but, uh, you know, so you all, can just play around with whatever. All Shifter Zerus. There you go. You can only play Shifter Zerus. Um, so I wish I wish we had that. Maybe in the future they'll put that kind of mode in there, and I think it ought to be called Party Mode a la Squ Squishy Dragon. Um, so <laughs> in Party Mode... You can kind of do a bunch of check boxes saying allow for multiple cards, um, don't allow legendaries, um, only allow epics, you know, stuff like Completely that. Completely random decks, or you know. There we go. We could go back to what we what we've always said was a bad idea, you know, taking away random decks. Um, so. Well, but or, random or decks you could, and you include could this and yeah. that and this <laughs> on your different. Uh, Expansions. Yeah. Well, so you could say you could do, random decks, including all but this one expansion. That's a good idea. Also, you could do um, tavern brawls, a list of all the past tavern brawls. So you could say, oh, I remember there was this one, and you go back through the tavern brawls, and you say, that was it, and good you can idea. just play it. You know? Yeah, that would be sweet, too. Because I would love to do this tavern brawl for, you know, a while Never. to learn the new cards and to learn what combos are good. Because that narrows it down so much, and it's really fun, whether you win or lose, which, you know, I don't like losing very much. So <laughs> so it's great, because for me, it's a quick way, because these games are pretty quick when they're in this mode. Um, so it's a quick way to learn a bunch of cards, and then you go into a regular game, you say, okay, I know these cards work well together, you know, and, and this works well against that. 
Um, so yeah. Great idea. Make yeah, it happen. So <laughs> everybody who played this tavern brawl, well played. I, I am impressed. Our Facebook group, I want to give them a shout out because um, someone had posted something as soon as the brawl went live and we, everybody just jumped on with their combinations immediately. They were yeah. shouting out, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, hey, look at this. And it was just, it was awesome. So it many times. Like, that's what you had said that you thought you were the first person to come up with the idea of Mem Iron's head or Mem Ron's head. Someone else actually did before you. In that oh, yeah. thread. In that oh, thread. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I was well, I reviewing them along, and I was like, wait a second. Somebody else did mention it. Well, who was it? I want to give them a shout out, because that's awesome. Well, I'll tell um, you in just a minute. So, I said earlier that we were going to start talking about the classes in, in Whispers of the Old Gods, and that this week we were going to talk about a few uh, neutral cards. We already talked about a few neutral cards. Um, I kind of wanted to mention some that I've seen myself and talked to Vastidious and Squishy. They agree that they saw these cards too being played, um, whether for fun or in competitive play. So the legendaries that we've been seeing a lot of, and uh, those of you that are wondering who should I craft, um, you know, what should I craft, what cards, you know, should I be playing with, kind of listen up because this is, what I would consider not necessarily the meta, but these are cards that are popular, whether it be for fun or for profit. Um, Twin Emperor Vecklor is almost a must-have in a Cthulhu deck. He is a seven-cost legendary that has taunt, and his battle cry is, if your Cthulhu has at least ten attack, summon another emperor. And he has four attack and six health. So if you're Cthulhu has 10 or more attack, there'll be two of these on the board at the end of your turn. Um, another legendary is Nazoth the Corruptor. So Nazoth the Corruptor, just like all the other old gods, is a 10 cost, and he has 5 attack, 7 health. His battle cry is summon your death rattle minions that died this game. So as long as your Sludge Belcher didn't get hexed or polymorphed, as long as he was killed off, then you summon him back. Same with Sylvanas, same with Bane Bloodhoof. Um, cool stuff, cool stuff. So Nazoth the Corruptor, um, another old god that we see a lot of and is a lot of fun is Cthulhu. So everyone out there gets Cthulhu if they play Hearthstone, because you get him immediately. You don't even have to, well, as soon as you go into the opening pack screen, you don't even need to open the pack, I don't think. As soon as you go into the screen, you before you open your first three Old Gods cards, or card packs, you get Cthulhu. And Cthulhu, he is 10 cost and a 6-6. Six, six, and it's, his battle cry is, deal damage equal to this minion's attack randomly split among all enemies. Of course, there's 16 or 17 other cards that buff your Cthulhu and do different things with your Cthulhu, like the Twin Emperors I mentioned earlier. So Cthulhu, you could build a Cthulhu themed deck and actually have it ver be very viable. Um, I wouldn't just throw all the Cthulhu cards in there and hope that you'll do good. Um, you kind of got to think about it and what, what cards you really want. Um, another old god that is seeing a lot of play and is a ton of fun is Yog saron Hope's End. So Yog saron 10 cost, 7 attack, 5 health. His battle cry is, cast a random spell for each spell you cast this game. And the targets are, targets are chosen randomly. We talked about this card a little bit earlier in a few episodes in the past, and um, it did not, seize, it did not uh, fail to entertain us. We've had a lot of fun with it. Vastidious and I actually made a Yog saron video that will soon have full audio, not just my <laughs> audio. We apologize Oops. for, for uh, <laughs> not, not noticing that sooner. I, I should have taken advantage of that and listened, but I didn't. I just saw it yesterday and was like, whoa, that's annoying. It's just my voice talking to myself. <laughs> so, I thought um, it was a little odd, but I didn't comment on it. 
So if he is, I went in there to go tell her about it, and she's watching it. And she didn't even mention it. So. Yeah, I was well, just well, like, oh, they didn't do Best of Daisy's Voice. Okay, that's a little odd. Well, what's cool about this card is um, it casts these spells randomly, but I would say probably 75 or 80% of the time, it's in your favor. So, <laughs> oh, man. yeah, so I played it and it's like 50 oh, 50. It's like, it's like worse than that for me. <laughs> uh, I don't have best of Ace's luck necessarily when it comes to Yogshiron. Are you, are you one of those people that puts yourself into fatigue and kills yourself? <laughs> no, it's I've just seen, the spells seem to gravitate towards my face. Oh, whoops. So, yeah. Oh, and she's not funny. kidding. I've been uh, watching no. sometimes. Yeah, right, but so, I mean, it's still fun. It's just a little underwhelming. Well, what's it's not fun to get a pyroblast to your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, because some of the other stuff going on, it's like, oh, that was awesome. Too bad it was, you know, in my face and not theirs. So, you know. Yeah, that's no good. <laughs> All right, well, what's not underwhelming are um, these two epic cards. Uh, Vastidius mentioned his is one of the favorites, the Scaled Nightmare which doubles its attack at the beginning of your next turn, so as long as it survives, which with 8 health, it's definitely going to survive. So Scaled Nightmare is a dragon, so he has that going for him. He's 6 cost, 2 attack, 8 health. At the start of your turn, double this minion's attack. Very, very cool epic card. A lot of fun. Pretty, pretty viable. Vastidis, nice. have you played with it yet, or have you seen it? I've seen it played against me. Oh, scaled and it's Nightmare with Deathwing. Okay. You have two of these Scaled Nightmares in your hand. You play Deathwing. Not, not, not the original Deathwing. The oh, new oh, Deathwing. I was like, you're wanting to discard Correction. them? Deathwing Deathlord. <laughs> Deathwing Deathlord. Because you play okay. him and he puts them on the board. When he dies. When he dies. Which leads yeah. to 2-8... Two, Scaled nightmares on the board. That would be a nightmare. And it would, it next would turn, be a nightmare. <laughs> they're eight eight or they're four eights. Yeah. Right then, so. Yeah. That could be fun. It could be. It could be. So uh, you're liking the Deathwing. Um, we'll and then your, the other epic that I saw a lot of is Cthulhu's buddy, the Crazed Worshipper. So the Crazed Worshipper is a dwarf. And he is, I, I had to say that, I love the dwarfs. Um, so, five cost, three attack, six health, crazed worshiper. He has taunt, so uh, whenever this minion takes damage, give your C'Thun plus one, plus one, wh wherever it is. So it could even be dead, and he still gives it plus one, plus one. It could be on the board, which I really like. You play this guy after you have C'Thun on the board, and he's a taunt protecting your C'Thun. And then every time he gets hit, your C'thun just gets bigger. He's pretty cool. Oh yeah. So Crazy Worshipper, I saw a lot of play. Um, when we move on to the rares, I saw Disciple of C'Thun played a lot. I played it a lot, but no other rares. So the Disciple of C'Thun is a panda, and he's a three cost, two attack, one health panda. That his battle cry is deal two damage, give your C'Thun plus two plus two. So I like playing this card because you can point that two damage anywhere you want, have a blast with it, and he says uh, when he comes out, he actually chants C'Thun, 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 which I think is pretty cool in his panda <laughs> accent. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, there, there's not a lot of other rares that I saw a lot of play. Um, you know, I saw. But as we said before, some of these may start getting used as people think of ways to use them creatively. So, and I haven't, I haven't played a lot, but I did ask a few other people, and uh, you know, they Doom Caller saw a little bit of play, and he's the eight cost seven nine minion that gives your Cthulhu plus two plus two, and if it's dead, it shuffles it back into your deck. Um, saw him played a few times, but rares just aren't getting a lot of play. A lot of commons are, oh, not a lot, but, you know, a few commons are being played. Um, one, I've seen Biofin Hunter, and that may be because of the Brawl. I, I can't really remember, but I do I do remember seeing a lot of it mm -hmm. being played. And that's the, that's the two attack, um, one health, 
two cost Murloc that summons a 1-1 one, one ooze with taunt for its battle cry. Um, the Twilight Elder. So the Twilight Elder is that gnome that costs three, has three attack and four health. At the end of your turn, give your Cthune plus one, plus one. So if you can keep him alive, he keeps pumping up your Cthune. He's, he's pretty cool, and I'm seeing him played a lot. The uh, Twilight Geomancer. Vastidius said he saw this guy being played a lot. And the Twilight Geomancer, let me see if I can find him. There he is. So the Twilight Geomancer has taunt. He's two mana, one attack, four health. And his battle cry is give your Cthune taunt. So let's say you get your Cthune pumped up to a 16-16. When you play him, he'll have taunt and he'll be a, a giant wall for you to hide behind. So Twilight Geomancer seeing a little bit of play. Um, the Psychotron. So Psychotron is your upgraded Annoyatron. Five mana, three attack, four health. Psychotron, he has Taunt and Divine Shield, and he's also a mech. So kind of... He, he, yes, he does. He has a lot of pointy, tentacly attached speakers and he's playing a guitar and uh he looks yeah. like he'd be etc's little robot maybe maybe so the etc the band member the last common that i enjoyed playing and that i've seen um played a lot is uh the cult apothecary and squishy mentioned this earlier as being one of her cards she really likes because of the art he's a five cost four attack four health minion Battle cry for each enemy minion. Restore two health to your hero. Played this card quite a bit and really enjoyed that health that he gave me, keeping me alive to do some really cool things. So those are the neutral cards that I've seen being played a lot that seem to be popular this past week. Um, you guys have anything to add to that? Nope, you covered them well. Mm -hmm. I think a lot might change in the next couple of weeks as uh, people... Yeah. Settle down from this tavern ball because I think this tavern ball really got everybody's attention this week and really yeah. distracted most people. Yeah. So now <laughs> people get back with fresh ideas. I mean, I think that too is a huge piece to this tavern ball. Is you got some new combos that I think we'll start seeing in game, mm -hmm. like the mech warper and the. Uh, well, we won't see that one as much because it's got pieces from a pre one of the expansions that got pulled out. We'll see that in wild, but. Some of these, I think, will see these combos come on into the game. Yeah. Um, so this week's hints and tips I uh, encountered during the pre-show. <laughs> Squishy was having trouble finding a card in her collection. She was lost. So with the addition of all these new sets and you being able to switch between wild and standard and 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 building a deck can be a little bit of a daunting task now because there's so many different options to choose from don't forget that if you are in crafting mode you will not be able to see the basic cards because they're not craftable mm -hmm. so if you're looking for those basic cards like kill command or arcane shot or any of those you will not be able to find them in crafting mode so keep that in mind when building your deck that basic cards, the cards that are earned when leveling your classes up to level 10 will not be seeable or findable or searchable when you're clicked on crafting mode. Right, Squishy? Correct. I was looking for them to uh, like find the stats for Arcane Shot, and I was like, oh, I'll go to crafting in case they don't have it, which, you know, I did have it. Because um, <laughs> I thought, great, it'll show me ones I do have and ones I don't have. I'm like, it should be here. Why is it not here? And then Esp was like, it's not because it's in the here in crafting. So, mm -hmm. yay! I've made that the mistake before. There you go. Well, you uh, you were to the rescue because I was trying to figure out what my hints and tips <laughs> were going to be this week. So. Happy to help. And, you know, I mean, most people already know, you know, about that. But it's always nice to add a little bit to remind us. You know, e even I forget every once in a while. I'll be like, man, why can't I find this card? Oh, I'm in crafting mode. There we go. So, yep. there you go, kids. That's your hints and tips this week. <laughs> Squishy Dragon. 
Well, this week we did not have any iTunes reviews and we did not have any emails. However, I do have a Twitter shout out I want to throw out there. Um, there's this strange individual that sometimes hangs around with us. His name's Espo. He uh, <laughs> tweeted out something that's a little personal war to his life, and I wanted to share this with everyone in case you're interested in helping in this situation. I know last year we had a, a situation with our with Ariane one and her surgery and what we had to deal with. And we had a lot of people who wanted to participate and help us in that situation. And now Espo and his wife are in a situation that they would need, they were asking for some assistance with. And basically he tweeted out, it took us weeks to decide if we should do this. Any help is appreciated. The Espo IVF fund. And I've created a link. If you want to go do that to help out and to read more, it's a long story. It's a, actually well written by his wife kind of telling the story about what they've done and what's happened so far along the way. But it, it's not meant not health is not at risk. It's just they are trying to move forward with the family and they are having difficulties. So if you want to go help them, you can go to legendoftheinkeeper.com slash ESPO, E-S-P-O, and I'll take you straight to their GoFundMe page. But on yep. that, essentially what it is, is they would like to have a little ESPO. Oh, baby Espo, that would be awesome. A baby Espo. And they are having some struggles with that, and there is a procedure that they could go through to help that happen. So the process, though, unfortunately, is it's rather expensive to go through this whole process. And they've tried several different options, but they're at pretty much at the point where this is the really only option they can try it one, a little bit further. There is health insurance that's going to help with some of the cost, but not all of it. And so they're asking just for from help from friends and family all along the way to uh, help them cover that and help them and make it happen. And yeah. uh, as many people in the chat room say, we are praying for twins. Yeah. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> Lots of so, How about quadruplets? The way, the way, I want to see us the carrying four kids <laughs> on the his way bicycle. The, the way the process works, <laughs> um, we actually can choose you know, whether we want twins or not, but they suggest that we don't go that route because there could be complications. Um, so we will we will definitely only be having one um, unless something crazy <laughs> happens where we choose one and then it, I don't know, it changes <laughs> into two. But you could name yeah. one Emperor, the other one Velcor. <laughs> that would be awesome. You can have, like, these random Hearthstone named kids. Oh. Uh, uh, be Your wife would be like, yeah. no, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call your child Spawn of Espo. Oh, but, you know, the other one, Thank you. So and the other one will be Gorilla it. Butt. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, oh, you were too so, much. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we support the, my, uh, the innovative and very fun fund. Well, we... um. We, it, it took a while because we had been struggling this for about two and a half years now. We've been through processes and struggles, and um, we, we thought about asking for help, um, but then the way my wife and I are, we don't, we don't like asking people for help, but we're in a situation now where it's, it's coming to that time where if we don't do something soon, we'll get over that point where we can't do anything, um, or at least it'll be uh, less healthy for her. So we are, my wife spent some time to write this thing up, and it was about two weeks of us looking at this story that she wrote up, or it's not a story, it's what has happened this past two years, um, mm -hmm. and uh, deciding what we were going to do. And we, we finally sat down one night, and after many prayers and thoughts we decided to go ahead and ask for help and um so far we've had a lot of people come out and they've they've given us i think we're at uh 395 dollars yeah so huge thanks to everybody that's helped um it's a very expensive process the medication i believe isn't covered on it or is covered on, parts of it are covered on, on insurance, but the procedure itself is not. But the nice thing about the procedure is you are guaranteed, and this is going to sound weird, but you are guaranteed a live child. So we, uh, we're we pretty excited about having, having <laughs> a, uh, 
a, a baby, um, guaranteed. So it, I'm pretty sure it's if gonna I be have guaranteed. A, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm pretty <laughs> Actually, sure. Actually, it's, it's I'm child gonna, guaranteed. I think I think I'm gonna put that stamp that Ariane made. I'm gonna put that on my <laughs> wife's belly, and it's gonna say "Fun Guaranteed," and then it's gonna have the date, you know, "Fun Guaranteed," you know, and then the date that the, <laughs> the, the baby will be born. <laughs> well, I because, agree with uh, the chat room. They're saying if it's a girl, you need to name it Jaina, and if it's a boy, you can name it Antonitis or Tony for short. Well, you know, my my dad's name is uh, Anthony. So and uh, yeah, my. I'm sure they will, uh, Grandpa Tony, so. <laughs> um, I thought Jaraxxus was a good boy's name. <laughs> the so, middle name? Yeah. Just so when, when, he, when he gets angry, he can yell at his friends and say, you face Jaraxxus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so <laughs> if you are able to participate with this and want to donate, Put any baby name suggestions in your comments yes, as you donate do this, it. just to see do what it. happens. Aww. I think that I think cool. he'd appreciate it. just seeing, knowing where it's coming from, that too. You know, that would be awesome. The, the friends of <laughs> you know, well, we consider you guys family. If you would be able to join in with him and help them make this happen, so we really appreciate all of the support, and we appreciate you, Espo, and all that you do. So yes, anything oh, we can do to help, we will certainly try and do. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, it's it's okay if. I have a boy, and his name is Jaraxxus Malganus Esposito. Thank you, Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is amazing. No one would know how to spell it or pronounce it, but it would be awesome. Now, just don't do what the other suggestion was and name a child Gruel. I don't think... <laughs> I think uh, lots of ribbing and punishment would be upon that child in high school. Yeah, Cruel Gruel. You know how kids make nicknames. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it, and my wife appreciates it. Um, she, uh, like I said, it was tough because we didn't want to ask for help, and but we're getting to the point where we we have to do this, and we're 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 definitely gonna have to finance it. But any little upfront, you know, money mm -hmm. that we can put in will kind of call the expense and and interest and. And things like that. So thank you to everybody that has helped and everybody that's planning on helping. Um, we really appreciate it. And I will take all baby names into account when we do. <laughs> when my wife is you will, a child. But your yeah. wife won't. I, I will. My <laughs> wife, no. She, no, she no, already no. has, she has her names already decided. So she, uh, <laughs> she has some, some interesting names. One, one that stands out is she really likes this. Well, we both like the show Bones, and um, the lady in there. Her name is Temperance, and and mm. Leslie wants to name our daughter Temperance. So, much to our relative chagrin, I think we might go with that, but we'll see. Um, so, uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Let's uh, let's move on, and okay. uh, the Facebook shout out this week goes of course it has to go out to will who said mm -hmm. this last tavern brawl was the best one ever i may have played a little too much though and he posts a screenshot of the chalkboard which oh, has goodness. the number of wins below it mm -hmm. he has a hundred wins so as you guys know this it, it it says how many wins right so yeah he may have went <laughs> like 75%, 80%. So that means he probably played over 100, maybe 130, 150 games. Wow. Uh, so shout out so to do Will. Do you remember how many you had? Played Tavern Br I had uh, 47, I Ooh, think. Wow. Yeah. I had 26. I had yeah, two. I had <laughs> I had quite a bit, but nowhere near Will with his 100, yeah. and uh, that's that's Looney Tunes. That's that's straight up crazy. So shout out <laughs> to Will and his 100 wins. Congratulations, dude! And shout out hey, to our real Facebook. quick. So active yes. this week. Um, someone in the Facebook group posted saying, "Now that's a fat warrior," and the warrior has uh, 386 armor. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, geez. 
forgot about that one until just now, but it's like, how? Do, what? What do you even do with that? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I think if that happened against me, I would just keep playing just to see how high it goes. <laughs> I mean, do all I can to defeat him, but at the same time going, I don't know what to say. That's a big shield slam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, my. Oh, well, that wraps it up for this week, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us in chat. And also, look forward to next week, and we're going to start digging through some of the class cards and looking at the new cards that came out and kind of figuring out how these things work together. Maybe even looking at some decks that may work well with some of the new cards in this expansion. And uh, as well, I do want to mention again, make sure if, you have, if you're able to, we'd really appreciate it. Go out and support Espo in their journey, their quest to get a child guaranteed at legendoftheinkeeper.com slash Espo. But uh, if you want to Reach us if you have any questions. You can reach us at uh, legendoftheinkeeper.com or email us at info at legendoftheinkeeper.com or reach us on Twitter at, at LOTI Podcast. So appreciate you guys hanging out, and we'll talk to you guys later. Um, I did want to mention before Uh-oh. we go off air. Did you already go off air? No, I'm hitting. Oh, don't, don't, don't hit it. Don't hit it yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because no, I meant um, the end of the show, like the recording part. You didn't end the show, did you? No. Okay, don't end the show yet. I have to. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Oh, you need to totally not edit out this part. Yeah, not... don't edit out this part because I. An <laughs> orangutan or a What's gorilla? the news? <laughs> so, so in in a few short days, I'll be jumping in my truck and going to Knoxville, Tennessee, to right. meet and hang out with my boys. In the Tavern Championship. I know I mentioned it last week, but I might want to mention it again. That uh, Avantis, Versica, and Zeroshio and I, and uh, a lot of other people, will be hanging out in Knoxville, playing Hearthstone, and uh, we will have a champion. And we will have a championship. And there will be lots of Hearthstone playing, and lots of laughing, and fun guaranteed from Friday till Sunday. So if, if you're you are, there, look for the pink... Legend of the Innkeeper shirt. <laughs> no, it's not. He, he says it's Cinder. It's but Cinder. It's pink. This this is Cinder. What what is even Cinder? Cinder I think of as like black. You know, like ash Cinder. <laughs> Cinder. Like Cinder. Uh, yeah. That's not Cinder. That's salmon. Okay, so if you guys are anywhere near Knoxville, and and the the crazy thing is, um, there's only like twelve or thirteen of these in the United States. So it's like, if you guys are within like five hours or four hours, you need you need to go to one of these. It's it's pretty cool, and um, you should come to the Knoxville one, and say hi to Avantis and tell him he's doing a great job, and that he did a great job of inviting a special guest <laughs> named Despo. Because <laughs> I am he super excited. a good guest. Absolutely. He did. He did a great job. So I think I think Zeroshio may have had a little little input there, but uh, those guys over there at Hero Power are incredible. And make, if you guys aren't already, which I think a lot of you probably already are, you need to go over there and listen to their podcast. Definitely different than ours, um, and uh, they uh, their production value is is insane. They are awesome. And you need to go over there and listen to them and get on Twitch and watch them on Wednesday nights. It's it's incredible. It's an experience like none other. <laughs> okay, right. then. Now that is the last thing. So <laughs> we'll be and out of here and have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Good job, team. Done. Oh. <laughs> You threw me oh, off. Somebody was so tired. I, I was I was thrown off because I was like the whole IVF thing and my mind because I was gonna give Zeroshio and them guys a shout out and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm, I, I can't believe I'm almost getting teary eyed, and then oh. Zeroshio. Reminded me. So, <laughs> uh, Zeroshio, thanks for reminding me. I apologize, dude. But hopefully, I did you guys right. <laughs> well, see, it had more spotlight now because we made a big deal about it because we're like, what's going on? <laughs> was, 
Well, those guys deserve the spotlight. They're incredible. So they got the power. Oh, that's they can still hear me. What am I? Hey, you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, I forgot that we keep Twitch going. Oh my! See, you know, my you never is... have to worry about you know Espa saying anything bad about anyone when he thinks we're off stream. It's always positive. <laughs> oh, I love everybody. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, except for when they do something bad with Hearthstone, then I will come at you like a spider monkey. <laughs> it's it's either love or hate. <laughs> oh jeez, nah. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I, I did not mean to get distracted right in the middle of the show. I had a work email come through that was kind of urgent that I had to deal with, and uh, so that's why I looked aside at point, for a few minutes. You guys were both distracted. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try to keep talking. Uh oh, Espo, he's exploding. Oh my gosh. Happened? I wish I would have seen this. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! So some guy named James <laughs> sent me. <laughs> He sent me a text message. Oh my gosh, this is awesome! Like a, uh, a Jerusio James, Patrick. I love you, dude. You you are you are the man. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, wait, it's coming into focus. Still can't see it. Wait, wait. It's got no. too much glare. Yeah. You got to read it. It starts uh, with a B. <laughs> so, it's it's a Hearthstone card, right. and I guess so. Avantes, did you make this? It's a Hearthstone card, and it's um one cost, four attack, five health, human. It says Avantes, battle cry, host the Tavern Hero Championships and Spring Preliminary, preliminary. So um and and it's it's the cardboard cutout with his head in the middle <laughs> and his and and his arms sticking out the side. So oh it's dry erase, dude. That's sweet. So nice. that's that's you guys are gonna have that this weekend. Oh it came in the blue. Oh you guys got the key. You guys got the key. Awesome. So I got this text message. Hold on, let me see the other. Okay. So I got this other text message, which is actually a um a there big we giant. Go case and it has locks on it um and uh my wife was like just bust the locks off <laughs> um i yeah. i need that zero or avanti sorry that is so awesome why doesn't everybody have mm -hmm. that isn't it cool though and it's dry erase like it's life-sized yeah it's pretty cool okay locks keys yeah so i guess that came in this in this thing Oh, there's more than one? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Don't let it. Espo have one. I will be inside that with every person at the place. And he'll take it home. I'm just saying, he'll take it and home. And he'll wear it. Next, on the show there next week, go. he'll have it. He'll, be, he'll abuse uh -oh. it. Need a Halloween Alex costume? I'm just like, gonna, use the card. I'm gonna be. I'm. I'm gonna. Alex on this side and Patrick on this side, and then Zerosio right here because he'll be like. He'll, he'll be like, He's what's his hat. face on my head? What's his name? What's Abather. that dude? He'll be Abathur on my head, and then all four of us will be in there. <laughs> oh, that'll be awesome! I can't wait. It's gonna be. Oh goodness, yeah. So I'm super. Oh, and how about this? So I, I I'm FaceTiming with my mom. And my nephew and my dad tonight, and uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, we're going, we're going camping this weekend." And I'm like, "Really? Where are you guys going?" And they're like, "Oh, we're taking the camper on Sunday, and we're heading down to Gatlinburg." What? You guys are heading to Gatlinburg? <laughs> I'm like, "I'll be coming through there Sunday night, like literally." And they were like, <laughs> "Oh, what?" Because <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, probably take Monday off work. And, and actually go and meet my family in Gatlinburg. So that'll be nice. really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like, oh my goodness. So I'm going to have an incredible weekend. So be <laughs> jealous, everybody, because <laughs> I will have fun. <laughs> uh, awesome. That's awesome. Super stoked. So, and, But I got my Legend of the Innkeeper shirt that I'm going to be wearing. That's awesome. I yep, just look I, for I the color salmon. Should've, I should have probably bought 
two of them. <laughs> yeah, we we'll said after we bought them. I think we'll be getting another one before the end of before BlizzCon. I'll like, probably go get a ahead and blue get, one. get some Febreze maybe or something. <laughs> but I but I definitely I want to get I want to get one can, of my cycling caps. You can wear it, you can wear it two days in a row. No one will notice. Hearthstone symbol on it somewhere. I think that'll be yeah. cool. Yeah. But yeah, so Avanti's I'll be going on Sunday after the event. I will be going right past the campground off of Interstate 40 that they're going to be staying at. So I mean it's it's literally on my way home. So I'm going to drive I think it's like an hour or maybe closer um the campground they're staying at. So I will leave Knoxville on Sunday and meet them at the campground Sunday night and hang out with them camp and then go to Gatlinburg Monday and then drive home Monday night. So it'll be it'll be really cool. Nerd funk. I will I really <laughs> that the nerd funk. I have had enough people around me with the nerd funk going to conventions. You just, you take a can of Febreze and like when there's a big crowd just like spray the air so everybody gets Febreze. I um at the card shop that I used to work at and do the WoW TCG events every Saturday night, or actually every Saturday, because we started at noon and it ended up at midnight, um, I would take uh, spray deodorant, and I would kindly talk to some of the males and females and be like, hey, listen, I have something um, for you to uh, take care of, and, <laughs> and uh, I would help them out, and I would do it, I would do it very kindly and slightly, because um, people would complain. You know, and I was like, listen, can I help you out here? You know, and, and actually people were very, very grateful because, you know, I, was, I did it on the sly. And I, I think I helped a lot of people out. And I, <laughs> I am quite proud of myself for helping these people from being I can stinky never do that. and having the nerd funk. Because I care about people and I don't want them having the nerd funk. Because it's bad. <laughs> it's very bad. Especially at conventions and card shops. Because, you're, you're, you know, you're there all day. And uh, it's pretty bad. Our card shop was real bad because um, we had a lot of smokers. And I don't mm. know if if uh, this is just our area, but man, it was you you'd get that stale cigarette smoke and bo and um, just stench. Yeah, it was bad. Not a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, I I've got on. a couple of people at work. Do you want to come talk to them too? <laughs> <laughs> Just it's like, funny because pass out deodorant. at the like halfway through the fifth grade year, I'll uh, they'll call me in to talk to the boys about a few things, including personal hygiene. So we, our county, they have to watch a video, and then Mr. Espo answers questions for them <laughs> from a script because they won't let me talk <laughs> freely because they know if, wow. I, if I talk freely, it'll be a. Uh, Zero Shiri, are you are you trying to get me to play some Hearthstone? <laughs> God, <laughs> like, like, like he's, he's mentioned it. So. I know. I think he wants me to play some. Is it Hearthstone? I think I think we should play Heroes of the Storm. I think we ought to play one oh. game of Heroes of the Storm because I I could muster enough energy for one game. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I would uh, I'd have to read from a script because I think. In fact, the principal, one school I taught at, she was like, I, Espo, I don't want to choose you, but I have to because you're the only <laughs> man F. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah. She said, uh, I'm kind of scared of what you might say. So here's a script. Please don't deviate from it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I'm um, curious and terrified of what you were saying to these kids. Uh, I, I mean, what I wanted to say and what I had to say, definitely two different things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rocio and I are going to play a quick game of the Hearthstone, and then we'll play Heroes of the Storm. So we'll okay, play... Well, we'll, we'll, I'll tell you what, we will play the Hearthstone on Twitch right now, and then we'll all jump into Discord and play the uh, Heroes of the Storm. Sure. So if one of you guys, uh, actually it would have to be Vastidious, wants to spectate and stream it on the Twitch, I will go ahead and do my best to cast our match. Okay. Rez is playing the Hearthstone. 
And I'm going to bring up the Hearthstone. Whoa! <laughs> I hear a bird. <laughs> Is that? That would be the Rindon bird. So the innkeeper just said, "Do you hear whispers? Let me shut the window." <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that. All right. Well, he's probably I heard Rindon. No... What what are, what are we doing here? What are we What are we gonna do? I need to know, so we can I can pick a deck and or and or build a deck. <laughs> we're doing the Hearthstone, but I don't know what, what is, we're playing. Wait a second. There there are two, there are two, Zeroshios out there. What? What? I have two Zeroshios on my HS? friend list. In your friend list? Yes. That's weird. Yeah, they're they're There's They're playing two. right now. Uh, both of them went... Ah, now it dropped to one. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, two listed. Maybe he's broken. Okay, yours yeah. is standard. Okay. Alright, we can... Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Standard. I have a few standard decks. Alright, let's... Let's play. Let's play standard. Go ahead. Challenge me to a standard game. And and Vestidius, you will be able to it. spectate soon. Absolutely. So I will be able to spectate spectate Cthun. Cthun. Yours is Goofy. Well, mine is Mickey. Mine's a Mickey type deck. You play Goofy. I'll play Mickey. Get it? Dis Disney. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Yours is more got? like a Daisy. Oh, ouch. <laughs> ouch. Whoa, my hearthstone went crazy for a second. There. <laughs> All right, I don't remember what's in this deck, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm going to go spectate Sorocio. I'm sweeping up the minion dust. All right, so in this match, we have Rexar versus Gul'dan. Zoroshio is playing the Hunter, and I, of course, am playing the, the Warlock. Notice that my Warlock is golden. I was about to say, um, you know, for complaining about how many golden cards I have, so far out of six cards we've seen with Zoroshio's, two of them were not golden. Oh, wow. Okay. Make that... Out of seven cards, two of them were not golden. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Zeroshio. I want to know why Zoroshio doesn't have a golden hunter. What is what is wrong with this picture? No golden Maybe hunter? Because it's a picture, <clears throat> not a picture. <laughs> Are you messing with me? <laughs> you know I'm going to say that every time. All right, so it's we got the... the golden uh, battle here. Yeah, the Argent Squire... <laughs> With the Vine Shield versus the Void Walker, the Blue Trash Bag. Blue Trash Bag. <laughs> blue Trash Bag. What? I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's what we used to call them in the uh, Wild Teeth. We call them Trash Bag. All right, so he uh, throws out the Divine Shield, wipes that off, and then Hero Powers. <clears throat> I think we're going to go with uh, the Juggler of Knives. A little bit of the Juggler of Knives here. So uh, Zoroshio comes up with the excuse saying that his non-golden cards are common, or the basic cards. But his basic cards should be golden because all his heroes are up to level 60, right? Okay, so we got Stone Tusk Boar taking out the rest of the blue trash bag and another weaving in of the hero power. I like this. Good job, Zero. Good job. Let's see... We need to uh, we need to play it like this. Let's let's juggle some more knives and let's go ahead and attack face. Seems like the place. And let's pass turn in hope he doesn't have multi shot. 
Oh, an error always. Error, error always? What's an error always? Double tracking? What? Double tracking. Look at that. Dragon egg. So we've got dragon egg and leper gnome. As you know, leper gnome getting, getting hit hard with the nerf. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think it's time, guys. Yes, it's time. You okay. Must. Well, we got to do this first, though. We got to do this first. Yep. So I attack in with my neck juggler. Then I coin. Then I play tentacles for days. <laughs> oh, one, two. We've got some juggling of some knives. Four. Ooh, and they're all missing that leopard gnome. Oh, uh, there he is. It's okay. It's okay. That it'll it'll eventually happen. He'll die. He'll die. All right. So, uh, because of the knife juggler nerf, we don't see knife juggler being played a lot because it's not a good card. So, there you go. Yeah, it's so horrible. still not a good card. It's horrible. But but I know Zoroshio, and he's going to come back from this. You just watch. He plays plays the Worgen Infiltrator, plays the Jealous Initiate. He's so jealous that when he dies, he gives random minions a random minion plus one plus one, and then we see another Argent Squire. It is zealous, not jealous. No, it's 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 definitely jealous. He is he is <laughs> definitely jealous. Um, so what what do we do here, guys? This is uh, this is interesting. Let's see. Well, you're gonna have to clear out a few things. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it. I think we are. Let's uh, let's get rid of that divine shield. Right. Oh yeah. And then let's uh, let's taunt up a little bit. Oops, I broke it. Oh, oops. That just happened. Okay, that's uh that was a juggle. In fact, those juggles were how do you say perfect? Yes. Knife exactly. juggler not a good card. Knife juggler not a good card. My lore. Alright. And let's do this. Let's make like yeah. this. And then because I talk too much, I didn't get to do all the stuff I wanted to do because my internet's too slow. Oh wait, yes! <laughs> oh I got it. I got it. Okay, there we go. Alright. We did it. Yeah, you guys wait, though. Zoroshi is going to do this. He is going to pull this off. Yep. And there's your arcane shot. Squishy, did you see that? And there is your brave archer. Look at this. Look at this combo. I'm still trying to and catch that, up. That's the combo right there. That is the combo. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's like give our, our C'Thun plus two plus two. We'll and give a juggle. Excellent. We'll do that. And then we're going to do this. <clears throat> Let's draw a card. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, I see the uh, Brave Archer. Um, oh, I had lethal. Arcade had shot lethal. now. I almost missed lethal. So there we go. <laughs> Good game, Zero. I got extremely lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Knife Juggler, still not a good card. <laughs> All right, good game, dude. Good game. So I'm guessing that that was uh, that was Versika's hunter. Is that right? Because he 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 probably built that deck. Am I correct? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> for those for those of you that don't know, uh, Versika loves Face Hunter. I think that's his, his favorite deck. I, I approve. You approve. All right, guys. Well, I think so. I everyone read. tweet Versika and say, "I I love Face Hunter also." <laughs> so, so. Everybody also, while you're at it, tweet Ariane and say, "Happy birthday!" Happy birthday! I was just gonna say. That. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh boy. Okay, also. switching to Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I'm gonna shut down the stream. Everyone. Yeah, Alrighty. Came out. And we'll see you guys later. Oh, there's a red hot on the floor. 